Before I get too deep into this, I have to set some groundwork for how we got to this point. Pokemon's rough transition into a home console series has been interesting to say the least. As soon as the Nintendo Switch was revealed, expectations were through the roof on what they could achieve once the Pokemon franchise moved onto this console. They even teased that Pokemon would be getting a mainline installment on the Switch during the 2017 E3 Direct, which made people even more excited. What would they do? Could we finally get a fully HD breathtaking 3D world? Could we finally see real-time Pokemon battles instead of turn-based ones? Could we finally get that Pokemon open world MMO we've always wanted? Well, our first taste was 2018's Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, which was more of a traditional Pokemon affair, but dumbed down and simplified for a younger audience. Added Pokemon Go style catching, putting less emphasis on battling and more on catching. In fact, the only battles in this game were trainer battles, and also adding in two-player couch co-op, which is actually kind of a cool feature. The response to this one was fairly negative from fans. The simplified gameplay elements combined with the tacked on game mechanics got a lot of criticism in particular, along with the graphics which many fans thought just looked like a 3DS game but upscale for the Switch. Personally though, I don't really hold that much malice towards this entry. It's clearly just meant to be an entry point for new players and something for casual fans to enjoy. It was never really meant to be that grand in scope or anything, so I think it makes more sense that the graphics would still be fairly simple. It even brought in some nice improvements like being able to see wild Pokemon before you approach them, it's really just meant to be a little game to set the framework for what Pokemon is for anyone that hadn't played it to this point. So in that regard, this game is alright, although that $60 price tag definitely makes this one hard to recommend. But despite that, there was hope since the fans knew that the year after we would be getting our first ever mainline Pokemon game on a home console. I can't wait to see what they do, the possibilities are endless. By this point we've had Breath of the Wild, Mario Odyssey, and Luigi Mansion 3 on the way, games that were arguably considered to be the best entries in their respective franchises. So Pokemon logically is going to be amazing. To say this game was divisive would be a massive understatement. Now this game has been a dead horse for a while now, I am aware, so I will be as brief as I can with this part. In almost every single way, this game was a downgrade for the series at hand. Poor graphics, non-existent story, painfully predictable antagonist, gameplay loops so hand-holding and linear that it makes Pokemon Snap look like an open-ended game, annoying copy-paste rival, underwhelming under-baked new gimmick, and a PR disaster for the Pokemon company like no error. This game made fans very angry. This was supposed to be a big moment for the franchise, but the first home console port ended up being a rush job that took several steps back. Sure, some parts of this game were good like the customization, the Pokemon camp, and some of the new Pokemon designs, and the wild area, at least conceptually, was a fine addition. But it was pretty hard to deny that this game was not what Pokemon fans really wanted. And they made sure that Game Freak knew, and uh, yeah, I, I think they heard. Roughly two years later, and here we are with Pokemon Legends Arceus. An open world spin-off, I think, that's yet to be seen. Either way, this game is finally Pokemon's Breath of the Wild moment. One, because, well, yeah, it's open world, but also because this is a huge change in gameplay style and direction for the franchise. Is this game the open world Pokemon game of our dreams? Did Game Freak actually make a good game this time? Yes. And honestly, I couldn't be more glad. This game really feels like it took everything that was good about the previous four years of Pokemon and utilizes it to its best ability. These improvements are present even in the beginning of the game, which shows a light sore wait. Sorry, I used Breath of the Wild for cheer by accident. Oops. <laughs> Alright, I'll, I'll fix that. Wait, wait a second. This is this is still Breath of the Wild footage. Come on, who who organizes my footage? You will be hearing from my Oh, wait, this is actually the right footage. Oh. Okay. Yeah, the Breath of the Wild influence is very apparent in this game. After getting your phone stolen by Arceus, you were transported back to the past of the Sinnoh region. You were found by Professor Pixel Pursuit, where you learned how to catch a Pokemon. And after a bit of training, you become a member of the Survey Corps, who are tasked with creating the first ever Pokedex of the Sinnoh region. What you may have noticed about what I just said is that this game actually has a story, and a pretty solid one at that. I know it's crazy, right? Alright, I won't compare everything to Soul and Shield, as easy as it is to do. But yeah, after that you meet some more members who give you side quests and mainly just exist to add context to the world around you. And hey look, Johnny's in this game. He just stays winning, man. The main gameplay of this game obviously differs from the usual Pokemon structure of routes and gyms, where you catch wild Pokemon and battle to level them up in order to challenge the gym leaders in each town. In Arceus, instead of routes, the world is split up into large chunks that you and Burke on from the main town. And the goal of the game is simply to complete the Pokedex. Although it isn't as simple as just throwing a Pokeball and that's it, at least for most of them. Now obviously there are the Pokemon you can run up to and catch very easily, but others require you to stay hidden using tall grass, otherwise you have to battle them in order to lower their health. And then there are the Alpha Pokemon, who are much higher level than the Pokemon around them, or larger in size, and generally very difficult to defeat. They mainly exist to serve as a reason to return to a previous area. Plus if you manage to catch one it will stay in its large size, which is kind of an awesome bragging right? 
Obviously you use Pokeballs, but in this game it's more depth than just a basic menu option. This is an open world RPG, so naturally it is a lot more active and involved. You have to throw each Pokeball by hand. You can walk onto the Pokemon and you have to use the tall grass to approach them without being seen. So they turn Pokemon into what is vaguely like a third person shooter, which sounds ridiculous, but it's the closest thing I can really use to compare the gameplay to. I mean, there is gyro aiming for the throwing and even a dodge roll, come on. For the record, dodge rolling comes from the grappling hook school of game design, which means if you add a dodge roll, the game instantly improves with no exceptions. Since you have to throw the Pokeballs by hand, naturally you will run out of them very quickly. So how does the game make up for this? Crafting, baby. It is an open world game. Crafting is basically an industry standard for this genre. Mainly since it helps you feel more immersed and in control of the world. And collecting materials can help add things to do while exploring the area. Throwing the Pokeballs isn't an easy task either. You will need to be very precise for it to actually count. And if the Pokemon gets aggressive and chases after you, Pokeballs won't work on it anymore. You ever have to throw an item that can stop the aggression or battle it in order to catch it. On that same note, the little ding noise it makes when the Pokeball bounces off it is so perfect. It always cracks me up a little bit to be honest. The farther you get into the game, the more Pokeball types you unlock which are more effective on certain Pokemon types, and also travel different distances when thrown. There's also some planning and strategy that can be born from all the crafting in this game. Crafting is a natural fit for this game because all being said, you will be going through Pokeballs at an alarming rate, and getting materials isn't that hard at all, just throw a Pokemon at it and it'll automatically collect. The gameplay loop in this game is very fun though, since the game mostly just gives you a vague story waypoint a while away, so you're encouraged to slowly go through that distance while catching and fighting as much Pokemon as possible, which naturally means that you are going to get lost and explain the whole area trying to find Pokemon. Now the main reason you would want to be catching as many Pokemon as you can is because the Pokedex requires you to fulfill certain conditions in order to complete an entry on a specific Pokemon. Most of the time it's just to catch X amount of Pokemon, fight so many in one Pokemon, and stuff generally like that. I personally haven't been super attentive to this so far, but it does add a lot of extra gameplay, which is the well-crafted part of the game. It's also very important for getting more storage, which allows you to unlock more Pokeball types and such, which makes catching Pokemon easier. Another thing I like is how the game doesn't feel too restrictive on how fast you can collect materials and catch Pokemon, as long as you know what you're doing. The variety and dispersion of the Pokemon in the world does help lessen the repetitive nature of the gameplay, which I don't really mind since this game is enjoyable enough but I haven't found it to be too much of a chore 8 hours in so far. It's really just a solid, fun, exploitative Pokemon experience at its core, which is really commendable. Now I could talk about so many other aspects of this game, like the side quest system which is mostly busy work but is a good way to acquire rare candy and items, or the many hidden collectibles scattered across the worlds, or the customization, which is still as good as it was in Soul and Shield as far as I can tell. But I do want to keep this video somewhat brief, so I'll gloss over all of that for now, and I'll go over the most decisive aspect of modern Pokemon games, the graphics. Now Pokemon on the Switch and graphics haven't had the best of history, as I've already explained, but when you bring your series to home consoles, you create home console expectations. But the problem Game Freak has with this is two main things. Number one, greed. Pokemon games release yearly, with a mainline entry one year, then a remake of an old gen the next year, then an update of the current gen in that order, which is a strict order that hasn't been broken until recently. Naturally with this fermentation, Game Freak didn't have too much time to figure out how to adapt to the console hardware, which is fine when it came to Let's Go since that game honestly looked fine, but with Soul and Shield you can really feel the rush development. The graphics are really basic and honestly shockingly bad considering how much this game is with fixed camera angles and linear routes. It is really odd considering how solid Let's Go looks. And don't get me started on the wild area. The draw distance there is remarkably bad. I'm almost impressed it's shipped like that. Number two, lack of staff. For a company that releases games yearly, they have way less staff than most ever major gaming companies. Not to mention for Soul and Shield specifically, they were split into two teams for the sake of Little Town Hero, which not only didn't help Soul and Shield, it was also a very underwhelming game itself that probably could have used more staff. The point being, if they continue to release yearly installments, which they will, they really need to get either more staff or more studios. These factors put Legends Arceus in an interesting position, since this game is much larger in scale, if Pokemon games continue to move in this direction, they can't continue to make these yearly realistically. This was already proven with Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, which was made by a separate studio, likely to give Game Freak more time to finish this game. That 2 FPS chingling isn't going to fix itself now. But despite the extra dev time and a very promising concept, the fans' focus was shifted again to the graphics. If you compare them to something like Breath of the Wild, yeah it's hard to argue that's really using the console to its full capability. But that being said, there has been improvements to the graphics when compared to Soul and Shield. For example, comparing this game to the wild area already shows much improvement with Pokemon dry distance and environmental detail, which for an open world game is very commendable. But the thing that really carries this game is the art direction. This game goes for a hand painted sort of look much like the ever open world game I've referenced several times, and honestly the result is sort of mixed. 
For example, some areas in this game, like the beach one, look really stylized and beautiful, while the second area of this game looks very boring and drab. And if you look over any ledge and try to take in the world around you, it doesn't look great. But during the normal average gameplay, this game looks fine. Sure, could it have looked better? Yeah, and I do hope they continue to improve it, but I don't have any issue with how this game looks particularly. I think the main reason for this is because the game is fun. Yeah, I feel like I've gone this whole video without like, getting into detail about that. Exploring this world while grabbing items and just being part of this world that feels alive and full of Pokemon to catch is so great. This is the Pokemon game I've been waiting for Game Freak to make for years. It is so satisfying to try to figure out how to catch various Pokemon and discover what their weaknesses are. For example, you have Pokemon like Abra, which will disappear if you even get kind of close to them. So you have to unlock the Fever Pokeball, which allows you to catch it from super far away. I really like this level of strategy and planning that comes with how you approach each Pokemon. It really helps add immersion and really feel like a trainer trying to catch Pokemon in the wild. And the way that the crafting materials are spread across the world, it always gives you a reason to keep hunting for more and more in order to continue hunting down more Pokemon, which leads to such a fun gameplay loop. It's hard to describe in words that well, but it just clicks. This is why the graphics in a game like Soul and Shield are so much more insulting, since the game fails in both a gameplay and graphical sense, while well, really it just gives off the impression that Game Freak didn't care in the slightest about that game. Arceus, however, is the exact opposite. I can feel the passion and effort that's been injected into this experience. All of the UI is really well designed and easy to access, although pause being mapped up on the D-pad is certainly a weird choice. This game just feels correct to play. Every puzzle piece that's required to make this game fun, despite the repetitive nature of it, is here and accounted for. To put it into perspective, on the launch day, I played this game for 7 hours, and I can barely bring myself to play Shield for 30 minutes of fucking bored. So if that isn't high praise, then I don't know what is. As far as closing thoughts go, obviously I recommend this game if it seems interesting to any of you, it is genuinely very fun despite the jankiness. I probably won't do a full review this one purely because of how long it would take to do so, but I will say this. I really hope that they take the gameplay from this game with catching Pokemon and use that to replace the route system. Because I think it would be really cool if in between towns you had this open stretch of land to catch and train your Pokemon between towns. That would be very satisfying and make the games feel more alive. But I am excited to see the future of Pokemon with this game being released. If they continue to make more Legends games, which is a safe bet based on the sales numbers, then I hope that the gameplay style becomes more fleshed out and expanded to make something truly incredible. See you later gamers, hopefully it isn't too long before I make a normal video again.